Hey, how's it going everyone? My name is the King Coda and welcome to another video. In today's video, we're going over some Inazuma content. We'll be going over the five craftable weapons that you can obtain now in Gitchin Impact 2.0, as well as where you can obtain them and kind of a general sense of who they're best on. There are leaves around. Uh, before everyone keeps talking to me, let's go ahead and take a quick look at them. Now, if you're just here to figure out how to obtain them, there will be timestamps down below. You can go there and I'll walk you through the quests on how to obtain each and every one of them. So the first one we're going to look at is the Amenoma Kaguchi, the one-handed sword. It is attack percent with base attack of 41. Um, pretty average for a four-star weapon. Um, it's... Uh, special ability is Iwakura Succession. After casting an Elmel skill, you gain one Succession Seed. This effect can be triggered once every five seconds. The Succession Seed lasts for 30 Up to three Succession Seeds may exist simultaneously after using an Elmel Burst. All Succession, all succession Seeds are consumed, and after two seconds, the character regenerates six energy for each seed consumed. So this really helps you become uh, more of a an energy battery, uh, is kind of how I read this effect to be. Uh, so you get a, a succession sheet every five seconds as long as you have an Elmil skill you can use every five seconds. Uh, they last for up to 30, so I believe the longest you can go without being able to recast your Elmil skill is, I, I guess, 30 seconds if you if you're really pushing it. To be able to reactivate it uh, every 10 seconds you, you cast your skill. But that's really pushing it. You have to be perfect. And I don't know about that. Uh, you can do it three times. You get three seeds. And then you get six energy per seed. That scales up with refinement. Again, this is a free-to-play weapon. You just have to grind up the mats for it. Um, so the type of characters that you want to use this on are characters like, for instance, Kazuha. Uh, Kazuha is a great example of someone you can use it for. Same for uh, Ayaka. Uh, the MC, kinda. Not really the Electro MC. His Your cooldown there is pretty long, but maybe Geo or Anima MC can kind of use it. Uh, even though you can't get the max use out of it, this might also be really good as a free-to-play option for your Shink Show. Uh, Bennett also great to use this. A lot of one-handed sword wielders can use this. I highly recommend getting these. This is actually the first one I am going to max refine with five because I happen to have five of the Northlander sword billets. Now let's take a look at the Hamayumi bow. Uh, it's attack percent with a base attack of 41. Again, bog standard. It will increase your normal attack damage by 16% scaling and charge attack damage by 12% scaling. When the equipped character's energy is 100% when you have your burst ready, uh, the effect is increased by a 100% bonus. So this is fantastic. Uh, I, I believe whenever you max refine, these numbers double, so your, your normal attacks will go up to 32, and your charge attack will go up to 24 at max refinement. Uh, and then if you have your elemental burst available, they'll go up by another double. So you will get a 64% normal attack damage boost, as well as a 48% charged attack damage. Which just sounds amazing at max refinement. Even at, you know, base level 1 refinement, you're still talking about that 32 and 24% when you have your burst ready. Now, characters that can definitely use this, uh, main DPS Fischl, uh, you don't really use your burst too much unless you're using it to heal as a main DPS or to reset Oz. I think that as long as you have somebody like Beto acting as a battery for you, main DPS Fischl can make good use of this. Uh, Ganyu, somewhat. Ganyu is much more supportive based. Her burst is very beneficial to a lot of characters, like if you pair, say, with a Hu Tao. Um, so, but it does increase your charge attack damage, which Ganyu can definitely take advantage of. But this bow is really made for Yomiya when Yomiya comes out uh, in a couple days from when I'm recording this. Yomiya loves to spam her normal attack. And as you can see, that gets the biggest bonus here. Uh, 
this is the free to play option for her if you don't want to pull for her specific bow and i honestly think this might be the better option for you over pulling a, a single copy of that bow now if you pull multiple copies of her bow it's going to be of course better you know even at uh, two refinement her specific bow is better but at five refinement on this it's hard to argue that this isn't the best bow for her uh it's definitely if you're going to be pull, pulling for yomiya definitely look into picking this up the katsura gikiri nagamasa i am butchering these names uh it has the samurai conduit conduct samurai conduct Increase elemental skill damage by 6%. After elemental skill hits an opponent, the character loses 3 energy, but regenerates 3 energy every 2 seconds for the next 6 seconds. This effect can occur every 10 seconds. Uh, can be triggered when the character is not on the field. That's also really big. Uh, this gives you uh, energy recharge at 10%, which is actually a very high energy recharge percentage. Uh, and base attack is at 42, you know, slightly higher, I guess, than your average four-star weapon. Uh, this is a Beto's weapon, basically. This weapon was made to be used by Beto as a support character. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's what I'm currently using on my Beto as a support character. I got this up to its second refinement level, so I'm getting a 12% elemental skill damage bonus, and I'm getting uh, six energy for the cost of three every two seconds. Uh, well, that's at max refinement, but you know what I mean. Uh, I intend to max refine this for sure. If you have a Beto, this is the perfect weapon to run on her. It actually has really decent stats also as a main DPS item, but the can trigger, even when the character is not on the field effect, is a big one because that means you can swap Beto, counter an attack, swap off Beto, and you will still be getting that energy passively uh, Beto's ultimate is an 80 cost, so being able to do this is big. Other characters that you can make use of this, I guess you could run this on Noel uh, to be able to get her sweeping time up faster. Uh, Duluc, if you're not going to make the archaic, but pretty much you want to make the archaic for her. Uh, or for him. Um... It's really about it. I, this is just Beto's weapon. If you don't have Beto, she was free in the most recent event, so I'm going to assume you have her. Uh, make this for her and you'll be a happy person. The Hakushin Ring gives you an energy recharge of 6.7. Base attack is 44. That's on the higher side for uh, most four-star weapons. Uh, when the character equipped with this weapon triggers an electro elemental reaction, nearby party members of an elemental type involved in the elemental reaction receive 10% elemental damage bonus for their element lasting 6 seconds. Elemental bonuses gained this way cannot be stacked. Uh, so you can't have multiple people with this ring, basically, is uh, how it works. Like, I, I see this as Lisa, uh, a perfect weapon for Lisa, and no one else really. Um, and the way they, they have that ending worded there, it's so that way you can't say have a Yanfei as your main DPS and use Lisa as a support and have them both have this and just keep stacking that 10% back and forth between them. You can't do that. Uh, it's just the one time bonus 10% elemental damage bonus. It's okay. It's kind of the weaker, the weakest of the new craftable weapons. Um, I would recommend on really just holding out on crafting it unless you really want it, which is sad because the quest line that gives you this is an amazing quest line that I love, but it's not all that fantastic. Keaton Cross Spear, Katain Cross Spear, something like that. Uh, Elemental Mastery, uh, base attack of 44, again, pretty high. Uh, increases elemental skill damage by 6% after increase... After elemental skill hits an opponent, it's the same one, basically, as the Great Sword. Uh, I guess I don't have to re-repeat it. But it's a great effect, like I said, for Beto. This would be fantastic on Zhangling. Uh, this isn't all that bad even on Zhao. Um, Rosaria, if you have her as a Cryo DPS, would be really good with this. But I think the most standout one to me is Zhangling with this 
spear. However, I'm going to put a little caveat here and say there was word on the grapevine that we might be getting a free-to-play spear, like how we've gotten the Dodoko Tales and the uh, sword from events. There might be a spear coming from an event in the future. So I would wait until 2.1's announcement to see what events are coming before you craft this there's a chance that what i heard was wrong um in which case feel free to i mean you just saved up for this basically but i would say just don't craft it right now i have three pull arms just sitting um if if i can like if i if there isn't a free to play option that's better than this coming then i'm just gonna craft this all right so that is it for the weapons. Let's go ahead and take a look at where we can get them. All right, the bow is the easiest one to get. However, is also most likely the one that will take you the longest to get, and that's because it is time gated. My boy here, Takashi, likes to run a little scam art uh, business where he will let you open one of three chests. You can see this chest is gone. This is the one that I got the uh, pro the blueprint out of. He'll let you open any one of those chests for the cost of three seashells that you can get by just running around here. You'll see these little glowing spots on the ground. You pick it up and it might give you a seashell. You need three seashells a day. You can only open one chest a day. And you go and talk to him and he'll he'll be you'll hand them over, you'll go back here and you'll open up a chest. So you can't open up anymore after you've opened up your one even if you have the seashells uh interestingly i opened the one that has a blueprint and i still have three of these seashells so i guess i'll see what i can do with that tomorrow um but this is this is how you get the the bow is you just come here once a day you gather up the seashells you give them to him you can get more seashells in a day than the three um, but that's all you can get, and it takes, I got mine on my sixth day, turning things in, but usually most people are getting them on the seventh day of turning them in, so bear that in mind. So all these good boys around here are protecting the, the spot of a quest you need to take in order to receive the catalyst. The catalyst blueprint is done by undertaking a quest from a shrine maiden around here, who will have you go around and cleanse various spots throughout the area. Uh, I'll go ahead and show you how to get to the first spot that she wants cleanse. She's, it's going to have you go in here and do a little bit of an investigation. It'll have you go talk to people in the town. This is the village chief. Time to go. You're going to need to go and investigate three <laughs> points around the town. Um, for instance, that bank down there. Uh, I believe there's something over there and also at the back of his house at a well is one of his three spots. And you go and talk to him again and he'll have you look for his diary. His <laughs> diary is up here on the roof. Uh, you go and pick that up and you give it back to him and then he talks to you and then he lets you go and open up the well. And when you jump down the well, you enter a little puzzle area where you have to traverse your way it's very simple you go up here grab this and you run through here and then it's gonna have you do this puzzle this puzzle is the basic mechanic uh, for these shrines and it's it's very simple so when you go and use your do hicker here on this it will like cleanse it and allow you to pray and then a symbol is gonna show up here and you can see the symbol has a bunch of dots it has a dot going to the right up left up and those dots represent the various different little shrines located around here. So what you're going to do is you're going to set their symbols. The one that you pray at is always set to 1. 
And then the others are set in the order in which to make the combo uh, that you saw it make. So for instance, if I can do it. So that one goes here. Let's see, it goes Time to, to the go. right. So we go one, two, three, and then four, and five. And then whenever you pray at the temple, it'll create the path. And it'll spawn an enemy here. You defeat the enemy. He's one of the big, bulky samurai guys. When you defeat him, it cleanses the shrine. And then the, the shrine lady will show up, and she'll have you go to several different shrines all across the way. Uh, I'm not going to do a full in-depth guide on this. I'm just showing you the first one. But once you cleanse all the shrine, all the shrines, including the big one here in Mount Yugao, where you kill a tumor that's basically destroying the land, um, that is when you will obtain the fox mask of the shrine maiden. And you use the fox mask and you can craft uh, the... You, you can then craft... Yeah. Up here in Jiren Island is where you go in order to obtain the sword. There will be a dude in a cage locked up at the top of this mountain. Let's head on up there. Time to go. So there'll be a person locked away in this cage. You'll have to kill all these bandits, but I'm going to ignore them for right now. And then climb the top of this tree in order to get a key. Once you have that key, you go back, you let him out, and he'll start a little quest for you where he has you go and collect a bunch of these slates in order to obtain a treasure. Oh, I didn't even know there was a Sealy locked away here. How do I let you out? Oop. Be free. Uh, once you have let him out, you'll do a quest where you go and collect a bunch of slates. I'll show you the location of one slate in particular right now, and that's actually back in the previous area. So back here in the shrine, I just showed you how to access in the previous sword quest. When you are leaving this area through this portal up here, You will gain access to this room, which you can then open up the gate in order to have easier access to it in the future. And in this room will be a bunch of things, and over here, I believe, on the ground will be a sparkling dot. When you pick it up, you obtain one of the slates. There are four slates in total you have to collect. You go back and talk with the guy on the island, on Jiren Island. And he will uh, tell you that there's a fifth slate you must go and get. Uh, it's a trick. There isn't a fifth slate. And after you go back and they're like, hey, you lied to us, he's captured again by a bunch of bandits. You free him again. And you get access to the treasure room where the sword blueprint is. For the great sword, it's one of the easiest ones to get and one of the most annoying ones to get. And by that, I mean, you have to come over here to the Kujo encampment. Yep, uh, the easiest way to get over to this side of the map is to take this boat and come over here. And you can actually get here pretty early on in the game. There'll be a shrine maiden and a soldier having a conversation. Uh, you would start a quest from them. I believe they're over by this waypoint. You start a quest from them in order to have you go and cleanse the Tara... The Tara... Tatarasuna uh, village over here. And how you do that is you come over here and you'll be instructed to go and talk with a man that should be sitting over here who will be standing over by this fire. 
and he will instruct you on how you can enter it, and that's by blowing the barrier up. There are three cannons located on these three little islands here, one over here, and one over here. You need to point those three cannons at certain spots around the bubble and blow them up. I'll go and show you the cannon use right now. Time to go. Here's the cannon. You pick up uh, this electro goom or whatever it's called, and you can operate the cannon. You can move it around very slowly like this. And then you just fire it at the spot marked on the barrier, and it blows it open. And you go on to the next one, and the next one, and you have it open. Uh, it's also this cannon that blows up a hole in the side of the mountain that gives you access to the Shiki Pavilion. So, very handy there. Once you blow that up, you can continue on with the quest, or you can really quickly go and gather up the keys you need in order to access the blueprint for the greatsword. So let me show you where the three keys you have to pick up are. Key number one is on the very top of this house right here. There'll be a chest, you open up the chest and you pick up the key. Key number two is right next to the boxes over there. Uh, same deal. There'll be a chest. You open up the chest, it gives you a key. Key, key number three... It's over on the go. other side of this hole. And you'll be taking electro damage while you're in here. Uh, I recommend bringing a healer with you or just swapping characters regularly in order to prevent yourself from dying to the electro damage. Uh, I'm not taking damage because I actually have completed this uh, area and cleansed it. It's a multi-day process. So you come in here and again there will be a chest. You open up the chest and get the key. Once you have all three keys, now you need to go and open up the gate. So from the position of that last key up there, we're just flying straight ac across. Uh, remember, it, while you're being electrocuted, if you pick up the electrogram, uh, the electrogram or whatever the hell they're called, you won't take any damage. So they're very helpful. Come over here, you insert the keys in order to lift this lever, and you can enter this area. There will be enemies you have to defeat inside of here, and there will be a, I believe a luxurious chest or something over here that you open up in order to obtain the key. There is also a thing up there, I believe, for the statues, <laughs> so make sure you grab that. Lastly, we will be going over how to get the new spear, and that is by coming over here to Fort Fujitau, uh, through that teleport just across over here. You'll meet a person over here named Kaji, and he'll ask for your help in breaking a barrier. There'll be a like water dome over this area, and you have to break that. Uh, in order to obtain pieces you need to fix this shrine. The shrine will be broken, and you have to put two different items inside of it. Now how you break the water dome is by going over to these and adjusting their orientation and elevation so they point at each other. And the last one points at the dome. Uh, just as an example, you adjust its orientation and elevation until this little electrical line coming off of it is lined up with where you want to hit. This one right here is your generator. When you attack it, it'll send out a particle. That particle will go to each one and then finally it'll hit the dome if the dome was there. 
uh, you get a cutscene if you do it right. So if you didn't get a cutscene, something's not lined up. The best way to do this, I mean, there's probably a guide for it, but at each one of these shrines, just adjust the adjust one until it's looking at the other one. Whack it, see where that ball goes. Adjust that one until it's working, and just work your way through it. Once you open up the dome, there will be an enemy inside. I follow the wind. Shocker. As well as an item to collect. The item will be the first one that you need to repair. You defeat the guy, and I believe you that allows you to pick up the second item you need to repair it. And then you can leave. And then you return up there, put the two items back into the shrine, and you have to do this a total of, I believe it's five times uh, at various different ones. There's one over here. Uh, I believe there's one down here. Uh, various different spots throughout the map. Uh, you'll have to go and fix them. And once you do all of those, you get the pole arm blueprint as your reward. And that is going to do it for our guide on how to collect all the different blueprint weapons that are available in Genshin Impact 2.0. As well as who they're best on, Wherever and in this world I roam, what they do. I carry memories Why of must the characters always talk when I am busy? Kazuha, why? But anyways, if you found this video at all entertaining, let me know. Or informative, let me know in the comment section down below. And I'll see you guys in another video. Peace.